Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Lawrence Training Academy. I am here with my HDS 7 Carbon, and what I'm going to show you today is all of the internal sonar menus on here. Now, I'm not talking about the sonar menus you get here, I'm talking about the ones that go inside your settings. So, I guess technically you can consider them sonar settings. But what you can do is just press your pages button right here. Now, if you have the new software, uh, like the 19.1 or the 18.3 instead of having it where it actually says settings over on the left here you'll just have this little gear icon in the corner where you click it and then what you do is you click on sonar right here now this brings up your sonar uh, settings now you're going to notice that right this third one down is your network sonar mode now depending on which source you have that set to will depend on what options you're going to see on the screen. Now I'm going to go over the single source first and then I'm going to go over to the multi-source next. Now the first option is our internal sonar. Now you need to make sure that that is turned on otherwise you won't get any sonar images or any pictures at all. And You can just simply click on it to turn it off, click on it to turn it on. Now the next one down is going to be your network sonar. Now that is if you are going to network uh, to another HDS that allows the units to share their sonar between both units. So say if I'm on uh, a bow unit and I want to be able to view what I'm reading at the back of the boat, as long as my network sonar is on, I will have a source option on my sonar screen that I can click on and it'll allow me to switch between which view I want to see. Now obviously, like I mentioned before, we have our network sonar mode. Now if you click on it, you're going to see the option for single source or multi-source. Now really the multi-source is designed for if you have more than one unit uh, connected on your boat or connected together through Ethernet. However, I generally recommend running multi-source uh, regardless. It just kind of gives you a little more control over your unit. Um, it just activates a few extra features on it. So, but I'm going to go ahead I'm going to switch it here in just a minute once I'm done. So for right now I'm going to just select single source. Now the next one is your log sonar. Now you've seen that before you click on it, you get all of your different log sonar features. Where on the first one you can click on it, you can change the name. The next one, if you click on, you can go through and switch it to different types of file formats, which as I mentioned before on my other videos, I recommend SL2 because most of the uh, file readers like Genesis Maps or some of the other online uh, you know, sonar readers will only accept the SL2 uh, file format. So make sure to switch that. Now you also have your save to. Now if you have an SD card in there, when you click on it, it's going to say internal and then it's going to say memory card. I recommend saving to a memory card as that is going to give you a lot more time that you can record. Um, like you can see here, I only have 42 minutes of time remaining on it uh, by running the internal. Uh, now if you use like a 32 gig card, that gives you a whole lot more um, time, almost like three or four days worth of time that you can save on it. Then you have your bytes per sounding, which the higher number you go, the more information the unit saves uh, with your sonar log. So I recommend setting it to the highest setting, which is 32, so that it retains the most amount of information with it. And then you have your create structure map and your time remaining. Now your create structure map, that's a really cool feature because if you select it, what it does is it actually creates a second file in addition to the SL2 file, which it creates an SMF file, a structure map file. And um, what that does is it, it's a, uh, a side imaging file that allows it to overlay over the top of your chart, which I showed you on my chart uh, video. Um, and so that way you can go into the settings when you activate that and you can basically set the sa settings to saved and then it, it basically plays that recording on top of it so you can see all of your side imaging in real time right on top of your chart. But whenever you're ready to go, you click on record. I mean, if you don't want it, if you change your mind, you can hit cancel or hit the X. Now, if you click record, uh, it just starts recording in the background. And then when you're done, you can click on it here and you can click stop and it stops and it saves that file to the card. Now you can also activate that by pressing your power button. You have the same option here for log sonar, it does the same thing. So that way, if you want to stop it, you don't have to go all the way back into this menu again. So we can just hit the X to clear out of that. Now down here you have your view sonar log, which if you click on that, that allows you to go in and view a recorded log that you've previously saved. Now you can do it this way, or you can actually go into your simulator and go into the files menu on it and do the same thing 
and select this log as your simulator file. But if you just click on one, what it does is it just immediately comes up and it starts playing that recorded log. Now I just only saved it for like a half of a second so it's just kind of stopped right here. But when you're done, um, you can go in, you can hit your X and take it right back. It's just a way for you to view it uh, real quickly for any logs that you've recorded. It's actually a, an extra option that was added in on one of the later updates to these units. Uh, now you have your structure depth offset, or if you click on it, it's your basically it's your structure kill offset. So what you can do is, so say if your transducer is um, three feet below the water line, what you can do is you can put plus three feet to take into account that extra three feet of water. Because when it's reading, if you're three feet down, it's only reading from that transducer down to the bottom. Now, if you want to know the true depth of the water itself, you can add in that extra distance from the top of the transducer up to the actual surface. Um, another thing some people will do is if they have an actual keel on their boat that hangs down, let's say it hangs down four feet below the transducer. Well, you can go in and you can hit it to a negative value. And so that way, when you're reading your depth, it only reads from uh, from basically from that point that you set it to down so that way so if you're reading and it shows that you're at two feet that means you have two feet of clearance below your keel as opposed to having to kind of calculate in your head you know uh, that okay my keel is about four feet below but it's showing i'm only at two feet so that you know i'm i'm about to hit something um you know so it's just kind of a safety uh thing on here um some people really you can just click on it you can go in and change it to a negative or positive. So in here, if you add a, uh, put the plus sign on it, like I mentioned before, that's if you're, you know, wanting to know the true depth of the water by adding in a little bit of depth above your transducer, you can set it to a negative. If you want to remove depth off of it um, to take an account for um, a distance below you. Um, but then when you're done, you just hit okay, or you can hit save or cancel when you're finished. But I'm not going to set that, so I'm going to hit cancel for right now. Now, you also have your installation and your restore sonar defaults. Now, you can hit your restore sonar defaults, and all that does is it restores all of your original sonar settings. It doesn't restore defaults to anything else, like your charts, your waypoints, anything like that. It's just for your sonar specifically. Well, let's go ahead and go into installation. Now, the first one you're going to see here is your source. Now, what this is going to do is it's just going to show this unit if... You have just the single unit or if you had multiple units connected together you could view the source um, from another unit right there and when you select that it pulls up actually these options down here per the individual unit that you select but now you have your depth offset which is the same thing as your structure offset except for that applies to just your 2d sonar whereas the structure offset only applies to like your down scan or your side scan imaging uh, you have your water speed calibration. Now this is to calibrate if you have a speed paddle wheel. Let's say it's not reading correctly. You can go through and you can kind of set a calibration um, on it. And you can just kind of go through and play with it and add in certain percentages um, to that to try to make it a little bit more accurate. Um, now you have your water speed averaging. Um, and so you can go in, you can actually increase this. You can go all the way up to 30 seconds on here. Now you have your water temperature. Now if you click on that, um, for right now it says that I have no temperature sources even though I'm actually physically reading one. Now this is actually a, an issue with the software on these units. Um, now in all honesty, um, I have never actually been able to figure out how to set the water temperature calibration on here. Because really what it does, because you have your water temp, but it's a calibration option for it. Now, a lot of people think that, okay, I'm reading five degrees off. I can go in and adjust it five, five degrees. Well, that's not really the case. When this feature is actually working, you can go through and you can make small incremental adjustments, as far as I can tell, um, to be able to get it to read a little bit more precise. But if any of you have actually been able to be successful in using it, please comment below and let me know. I've been trying to figure that out. I've even spoken with product management guys over at Lawrence, and even they couldn't really explain it to me very well. So for right now, I'm going to hit cancel. Now, down here, you're going to see your transducer channel 1 and your channel 2. So if you click on one of them, it's like the first one, it brings up a list of all the different transducers that you can pick. Now, as I mentioned before in one of my other videos, is that your channel 1 is the blue port on the back of your unit. Your channel 2 is your black port. So I am currently running a 3-in-1 active imaging transducer. So I'm connected to the black port. 
So normally I would select channel two. However, these trans structure scan transducers like the three in one or even the total scan, they have what's called as XID software in them. That is transducer identification software. What that does is it sends a signal up to the unit and it tells it exactly what type of transducer that you're using. And when it does that, you'll notice that it'll actually gray out the source and then it'll say like right here it says AI three in one. So that prevents me from being able to click on it and change it to something else. It just defaults to the exact transducer that you have. And so that, you know, you don't have to go through and set that up in the unit. It just does it all for you. But it also prevents you from changing it to something else and kind of messing up your sonar. But so when you're done, you got to make sure you hit save and then it clears you out of the menu together. Um, but what I want to show you is when I press my pages, I go back up here to settings. I go to sonar. Now I'm going to switch my network sonar mode. Now when I do that, it's going to change the settings that I have on the screen as well as in the installation menu. However, before I would do that, I want to show you one thing. Let's go ahead and clear out of here. Now on my sonar screen, when I'm on my single source, in order to choose which channel I want to run, I have to choose the frequency. Because as you see here, when I select it, you have all these frequencies, but then it has a CH1 and a CH2 next to each one. Make sure you correct or select the correct channel. Like I said, I'm using three and one, which is my channel two. So in these options, I have to make sure I select a CH2 option. Now let's go back into my settings. Let's go to sonar. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to multi-source. Now what multi-source does is not only in the settings, but it also changes a few things on how the unit just runs all together. So I'm gonna set it to multi-source. Now it's going to tell me that I need to turn it off. And it actually even tells you to turn on all the other displays. Now in my experience, I have always needed to turn off the other units. Otherwise it did not set it to the multi-source. It would just switch it back to the single source. Um, and so I'm not sure why it says to turn on all the other ones. Like I said, I have to turn off all my other units in order for that to be able to change. So I'm going to go ahead and power off my unit here. We're gonna power down. Now we're gonna let it sit for a few seconds. All right, now that we've let it sit, we're gonna go ahead and turn on our unit. We're gonna go ahead and let this boot up. Now while I'm letting this boot up, I wanna explain something to you. So that multi-source option, what that was initially created for was to take the units out of what they called legacy mode. Well, so if you had multiple HDS units connected together, and you had the network sonar on both of them. What would happen is it would force both of the units to read just one single source. So like uh, your unit at the bow, if you had it set to this unit, your unit at the console would also be forced to read off of the bow. Now, the same thing applied if you went the other direction. If you're at your console and set it to read off of itself, it would force the bow unit to also read off the console. It did not allow you to have your network sonar turned on and be able to run your units independent of one each of another on the sonar. So they added in this multi-source feature to take it out of what they call legacy mode. Now, it is important to know that the only way that you can set it into multi-source is if you only have newer units connected together. So let's say you have an HGS Gen 2, Gen 2 Touch or older, or if you have one of the older structure scan boxes connected into the ethernet network, it will not let you come out of that legacy mode and it will not let you switch to the multi-source. So you have to have only gen three or newer units to do this. But so I'm gonna press my pages button. I'm gonna hit settings and go back to my zone. So now I'm in multi-source. But now you may notice that up here, instead of saying internal sonar, I now have internal sonar channel one and channel two. What that does is it allows me to turn off specific channels on here, whereas before I couldn't do that. I could only turn them all on or them all off. Um, so like I said, that's one of the reasons why I like having the multi-source feature. Um, so that way I can go through and I can turn which ones I want on or off. Now, in order to be able to show you one of these extra menus on here, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on for the time being. Now, when I exit back out, so instead, so you notice here on my frequency, I now don't have all of those extra channel options. What it is, is I go back, now I have the source option down here where I can select it and I can choose between the different channels. 
Um, that's important to know. I've seen a lot of guys who couldn't figure out how to switch the correct channel, and it all depended on which uh, network sounder mode they had it set to. So let's go ahead and go back. And hit settings, sonar. Now we have the same ones as far as we still have our network sonar. Uh, we have our log sonar, view sonar logs, um, all of those. Now you have this one extra one at the very bottom here, which is your used network depth and temp data. Right now, I only have disabled because I don't have any networked units. Now, if I had a second unit etherneted together, it would allow me to be able to pull the depth and temp data from that other unit. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean the actual sonar image, it's just for your overlay data up here. So for your depth or your temp um, overlays. Um, and so if it's not reading correctly, or you're getting dashed lines and you're trying to view another unit, make sure you go into here and set it to the correct unit you wanna pull from. Now let's go in back into our installation. Now, if I, I have all the same options here, but when I scroll up, you're gonna notice that it only says transducer type. I don't have channel one or channel two listed. Now, it, and the way to change that is you have to set it in your source up here. So right now you'll see that it says this unit channel one. Now if I click on it, I can go in and set my channel two now if I scroll up, you'll see that it's showing my AI 3-in-1 transducer type. Um, I've had another lot of guys who have said that, hey, you know what, I can't select my transducer type in here or I'm not finding it in the list. Well, make sure you have the correct channel selected for the appropriate transducer that you're using. So if you're using like Total Scan or the 3-in-1, you gotta make sure you set it to your channel two and then you can view that transducer type. And then of course, when you're done, you just hit save. And so that's really about it for the sonar settings on this unit. Um, I hope you guys learned something. You know, I will have new videos coming out soon. Thank you so much for watching and please stay tuned. And of course, as always, stay safe out there, guys. All right, well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it below and hit the subscribe button and the little bell. This will allow you to get notifications every time I release a new training video for your favorite Lorance product. Also, I wanted to give you guys some really exciting news. We will have our own very own website pretty soon, LorantzTrainingAcademy.com. It's going to have even more of your favorite in-depth, comprehensive training videos, so keep an eye out. Of course, I'll be sure to let you all know along the way when it will be up and running. And don't forget, when you watch videos from Lorance Training Academy, the difference is night and day. Alright, I'll see you all next time.